Now today we'll be showing on how to test and replace a shift solenoid valve. Let me show you where it's located on this vehicle. The first thing I had to do very quickly, drop the front splash shield. If you need a guide on how to do this, I'll include a link in the description box below. We're looking straight up now. If we look straight up, right over here, right there is where the shift solenoid valve lives. Oh, let me show you a different view. And this vehicle actually has three of these valves. So this happens to be valve C that we're doing, but nonetheless, all of the tests you see here today, you'll be able to do on any of these valves. Now it looks like we'll be able to remove this, eh, you know, it looks harder than it really is. If it's a little too tight for you, you can always remove the starter. That's directly above it. I think we'll be okay. Uh, we should have enough room. Now you can test the valve while it's still on the vehicle, but just as you can see, it's incredibly tight here. I'm going to remove it show you all of the tests they need to do and you can really pinpoint if you have a problem with this valve now the room here is incredibly tight if you have some trouble again just remove the starter and you'll get clear access to this but that being said this is a quarter inch size ratchet and a quarter inch size socket 10 millimeters these tend to be not too tight there we go And the other thing is, I have a drain pan underneath the vehicle just in case. Right here is the harness connector. And there's a tab. I can get to it. Right here, press down the tab. Pull off on the body. Now, I'm not sure if you can see this. If you can, I'll give you another shot. But the first thing is, Always check the end of the harness connector. Make sure there's no oil, dirt, grime, that sort of thing. That will certainly affect the sensor. Now inside here are some O-rings, so that's where the tight is so tight. Whoa! Uh, well, it's out. Okay. So as you can see, the solenoid valve has three O-rings. This obviously prevents any fluid leakage from the transmission, and it's only held in by one fastener. And so this does a wonderful job in terms of keeping the fluid inside the, the transmission. Also on the end, you have a little screen. You want to make sure that that is nice and clean. It's not clogged up. Obviously, that will hurt the performance of what this is supposed to do. Very, very simply, this controls the fluid flow. It controls the shifting points of the transmission. That, that's why in this vehicle there's three of them. Uh, what we did the other day, which was the clutch pressure control solenoid valve, that deals with pressurizing the fluid. So, sort of a little bit different of, uh, of a job, but that being said, quite easy to test. Now, very, very quickly, uh, if you're familiar with my other videos, uh, it's going to be a repeat what I always say. If you, if you have trouble finding where this lives on your vehicle, the best thing you could do is a Google image search. A lot of times you can quickly dig up where this lives. Option two is to purchase a repair manual specific for your vehicle. A lot of times you can download them, uh, PDF file, even on eBay, maybe five, ten bucks you can purchase one. Option three is visit a forum that deals specifically with your vehicle. You will always find someone that's willing to help. And uh, you'll be able to track down where the sensor lives. So let's just get right to it. How do we test this sensor? We'll be doing two separate tests. This is known as a digital multimeter. Very, very important and a fantastic tool to have if you plan on doing your own auto repairs. Now, that being said, I'll include a link in the description box below directly to Amazon. If you do need one of these, this is actually from Amazon. And as you can see, you have a number of different functions on the multimeter. In this case, we need the ohms or the resistance tab. That's displayed with the omega symbol. Now, inside the valve here, you have two prongs. All that we're doing is we're taking the two leads from the multimeter and touching these two prongs. Now the black lead can touch the left or the right prong and the red can touch either prong, doesn't matter. All that you're doing is taking one lead to the left, the other lead to the right, that's it. Now to make this easier, I'm going to use alligator clips. This always, uh, at least for me, it makes the job easier in terms of holding the 
these leads and placing them where they need to go. Now a good sensor on average, a good sensor on average should read between 12 to 25 ohms. In other words, we should see something around 12 to 25 ohms. If you do this test, you don't get a reading. Very good indication that the uh, solenoid valve needs to be replaced. So as you can see, this is around 26, so that's perfectly fine. That, I'm perfectly happy with that. We're a little out the window, but nonetheless, uh, it's not a bad reading. If you do this, you don't see a reading. This is no longer good. Also, this may be incredibly high, off the charts. And that's also another indication that the sensor is bad. Just make sure you have a good contact with these leads. Okay, so that's the first thing. Now, the other thing we could do is what happens inside the vehicle, energizing this entire unit. And there's a valve in here that moves back and forth. Let me show you on how you can do that. Now for the next test, I want to apply battery voltage to the valve. Now you can use your vehicle's battery, or in my case, I happen to have an RC battery pack that pushes out pretty close to 12 volts. All that we're doing is taking the power from here and applying it to the solenoid valve. Now, in this case, you do not want to cross the wires. Uh, in the first test with the uh, resistance, if you cross the wires, it would not do anything. You just would not get a reading. But in this case, you do not want to cross the wires. So as you can see, I'm pushing down the boot as far as it goes just to protect and make sure that these two guys do not cross. Okay, so one lead goes to the right. Another guy goes over here to the left. Okay, now we should see the valve move, and I'll give you a better shot in a moment. So negative to negative, positive to positive. Let me bring this up for you. Hold on. Get this sort of right, and we should see this valve move. Here we go. Okay, you see that? And you can hear it. Now if you do this test, and the valve does not move, or if it's very, very sluggish, replace the valve. They're inexpensive. Uh, this being, uh, this is an 06 Acura, and on this vehicle, the OEM or the factory part is only $55. So it's not an expensive valve by any means. And a lot of times you can find refurbished ones for a little bit less if you don't want to pay that much. But that being said, that's all it takes. Now the last thing also, if you do have the check engine light on your vehicle, and you perform this repair, make sure you delete the check engine light and I'll show you at the end of this film on how you can do that. Also with the new part, make sure you have new, brand new O-rings. Let's go ahead and reinstall it. Now, as you probably heard, it did click. Make sure you hear that clicking noise. That verifies that you have a very good seat with the O-rings. And when you tighten this down, again, it's roughly around 10 foot-pounds, which means just don't overdo it because you can snap these. And then you have to drill it out and it becomes a big issue. Fortunately, the Honda parts are really well made and they're pretty strong. I was doing a uh, water pump replacement on a Subaru and very similar in terms of these very, very small fasteners. And uh, they were rated something like 20 inch pounds something very low and I snapped one and uh, fortunately I had the working room to repair it but that being said you just want to be careful with these small fasteners okay get the harness connector make sure it's nice and clean and that's it let's go ahead and erase any engine codes you may have Then of course the very last step is to erase any engine codes you may have or trouble codes. If you don't have a scan tool you can always go to your local auto parts store if you are uh, looking to purchase one which is nice to have if you plan on doing your own auto repair. I'll include this one that uh, I purchased off Amazon. It can read trouble codes not only for the engine, the transmission, the airbags and the ABS. So it's a nice system. It's not too expensive. But ultimately you would just go down to here and you would erase any codes in here. And that's it. So I'll just take it for a quick test drive. Make sure everything is okay. And we're in good shape. 
Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.